Welcome to the next episode of the new Thrive Today podcast, Relational Skills in Real Life. I'm Chris Corsi, and I'm really glad you're here. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm also the co-founder of Thrive Training and the president of Thrive Today. Friends, this new podcast is all about opportunities to share the good stuff, to share stories, relatable stories of how relational skills are used in everyday life. That is the question everybody wants to know. How do I use relational skills? What does it look like to practice these skills in real life? I'm really excited about today's focus because today's topic is on how relational skills changed Jen's life. Jen is my wife, and she's going to share a little bit about how relational skills changed her life, changed her relationships. I'm really excited about what Jen's going to share. Hi, I'm Jen Corsi with Thrive Today. And today I want to share a little bit with you about how these relational skills have transformed my life, a little bit of my story. So growing up, I grew up in a home that was pretty high on hopeless despair and fear and low on joy and a lot of these other relational skills. So about 11 years old, I was hospitalized for suicidal depression. And when my friends were graduating from college, I was at a real low point and uh, was on federal disability because getting out of bed was a good day. Now you may ask yourself, how did I go from that to where I am now, where I'm running a ministry and getting to share these relational skills with others? And the answer is relational skills. For me, I was, I was missing most of them, honestly. Uh, but one of the biggest holes for me was the skill of quieting. Um, I, I realized I just, I did not know how to quiet. And when I tried to be still, I had to hear my thoughts and be alone with my brain. And it was kind of a scary place and I didn't know how to cope with that. And so I remember I was in college before I kind of bottomed out. I was either really high functioning, uh, until I would burn out and bottom out because I didn't have that quieting skill. So at the time I was a math and computer science major. Um, I was the teacher's assistant for a calculus class. And my idea of resting at that point was grading calculus papers while watching a movie, because I had to be doing that minimum number of things in order to actually attempt to rest because I did not know how to rest. And when I was introduced to these relational skills, it became clear that resting was the biggest hole that I had. And while I was lacking in pretty much all of them, rest was, was one of the biggest places that I had nothing on file. And in fact, that has made the biggest difference. So when I was first introduced to the skill of rest, I noticed that it was really hard for me to try to quiet. I try to sit and be still and be quiet, even for just 30 seconds, and my brain would start racing, my to-do list would start scrolling through my head, and I would think, this is silly. I just need to get up and start doing some of these things, because when I'm done with my list, then I can rest, but I can't sit here and rest while I have this to-do list scrolling through my head, and in fact, I would end up feeling much more tense and anxious at the end of attempting to rest, but thankfully, I had people who encouraged me and people who had the skill and could sit with me, and we could be quiet together. At first, it was just maybe for 30 seconds and then built up to a minute. And over time, I started to be able to take those deep breaths and feel the tension start to drain out of my body as I quieted and be able to relax my mind and relax my body and actually be able to be refreshed by moments of quiet, which was a huge change for me. And after lots of intentional practice, I was able to just insert those brief moments throughout my day, whether it was when, when our kids were little, uh, we had a baby and a toddler, trying to get them out the door for anything was so stressful that by the time I got to the car and got them buckled in and strapped in, I was just so tense. And I remember just sitting, even if we were running late, I'd just sit at the steering wheel and close my eyes for a minute and just take five deep breaths, the big belly breaths, and I would feel the tension drain out of my body and just five deep breaths and I could feel my body reset. Whereas before when I first started doing this, no amount of quieting made me feel that kind of 
rest. It took a, it took a lot of work and practice to get to the point where a few deep breaths and I could notice a difference. And as I was intentional about inserting these moments into my life and helping teach my kids these moments, it has greatly increased my capacity for hard things, for joyful things, because when we can't quiet, we just aren't able to fully enjoy the good stuff either, the high energy, the joyful stuff. And so for me, what has made the biggest difference is the quieting skill, but really I needed work in all of them. And I feel like even though I still have hard days, hard moments, um, I just feel so much more able to handle them, able to take them in stride, able to practice and be intentional with the skills that I've learned on those harder days, as well as being intentional with them on the good days so that I have a reserve of joy and a reserve of quiet and I'm well practiced up so that when I hit the harder patches, I have that to draw on and it, it's not brand new. It's, it's hardest to do those things when it's brand new. So I would just encourage you that starting this journey is, is hard. It can be hard. And it, at the same time, many people have immediate results because uh, just a little bit of appreciation can go a long way and we can start to feel a big difference in our day. Oh, if we have a little bit of the skill of quiet and we just haven't practiced it enough, which is what the majority of people experience, um, a little bit of quieting can go a long way. If you, like me, had nothing on file, it can take a little bit longer to get to the point where that skill, where our brain has something enough on file to be able to practice and use that skill. And now I'm so thankful because I'm so thankful that we were able to learn these relational skills because I really had very little on file to be able to pass on to my kids or to invest in my marriage with because I just, I didn't know how to quiet. I didn't build joy well. I definitely didn't recover from big emotions well. Uh, there's just so many of them that have been game changers for me. Um, and I just want to encourage you that when we put in the work to practice, even if it's hard at first, it it makes a difference and, and it pays off. And I just, I feel such a difference at this point in my life. I, I look back on the place I was 20 some years ago and think, wow, my, even my hard days are, are nowhere near what my good days used to look like. Um, they, my hard days are so much easier than my good days back then. So um, it's, it's just been a huge transformation. So I hope that you enjoy listening to these stories and uh, learning how the relational skills can impact day-to-day -day in real life, your struggles as well as your joys. Wasn't that good? Jen shared how relational skills transformed her life. You know, one particular skill, the skill of resting and quieting, really revolutionized her life because this was the skill that everything hinged on. If you're not able to stop, you're not able to pause, you're not able to calm and quiet, then what happens is your brain will become depressed. You just live in overwhelm, anxiety. There's just nothing fun about that. And I have to say, as an outsider watching this transformation in Jen, really was fun to see how she became a new person. She became a better reflection of who God created her to be. And friends, just can't put a price tag on that. It's been fun to see her pass on these skills, especially the quieting and resting and calming skill to our sons and how she's been able to use this skill and demonstrate this skill in our family. And so this is a hopeful message, friends, that we all can learn these missing relational skills or strength and weak skills that are hindering us in some way. And this really is what this podcast is all about here. Our podcast is really about trying to demonstrate what it looks like to learn and practice relational skills in real life scenarios. And we can all learn from these examples. And I hope that it, it gives you some hope and some clarity on how life can be lived as we start learning these relational skills. So where do we go from here? We'll keep joining me for the next podcast. We're going to continue the momentum on sharing who we are and what Thrive Today is all about, why we do Thrive Trainings. You can like and subscribe to our podcast and stay updated on our latest episodes. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here.